Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And you know what guys, I'm on a mission. I would like to reach 1,000 subscribers before the end of August and my birthday is in a few days. It's actually on the 25th of August. So help me, you know, make sure you share, um, you know, my videos and make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. So, and yeah, and welcome to the family. Uh, so we're going to react today to another video from Wardemeyer. So why do Africans visit Dubai instead of Namibia? And honestly, I believe and I strongly believe it's out of ignorance because most of us had no idea how much beautiful uh, Africa is. And I'm like, Namibia is on my bucket list. I have to go to Namibia. I have to visit Namibia. Because what I've seen so far from the series of videos, I'm like, wow, where, where have I been all this time not knowing about Namibia and how beautiful Namibia is? And so, yeah, so let's see what he has in store for us. And let me know in the comment section below if Namibia is now on your bucket list. If you ever watch my first episode on Namibia, I stated vividly that Namibia is Africa's most underrated country. Right. And if you haven't watched the reaction video I did about, you know, Namibia being Africa's most underrated, um, you know, country in Africa, make sure you watch that one after this one. You know why I said that? Because Namibia is not what I expected. Mm. Wow. The untapped natural. Look at that. Look at how beautiful Namibia is. You have sand dunes on the one hand, then you have the ocean on the other hand. It's crazy that the landscape is just unbelievable. And this is not Dubai, this is Africa, and it's natural. Trap beauty? Wow. The cleanliness of the cities of Namibia. Mm. Yeah. Not just the cities, but the towns and villages. Right. Yeah, I think I believe that's the most surprising part. It's the whole country as a whole. You know, it's not just the, the city center or the CBD or just the, the posh estates. It's everywhere. From what I see from the videos, it's everywhere. And the discipline... People respecting traffic lights, um, people not bribing the police and all that stuff. And the beauty of Namibia, I'm like, wow, it's fantastic. I must confess that I traveled the entire Namibia. And one of the places that really shocked me, and I believe that you are also going to be shocked, mm -hmm. is the coast of Namibia. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I want to say, welcome to the coast of Namibia. <laughs> Let's go. Love it. Oh, what, what was that? Namibia. So, Swakum and Wavis Day. Okay. Just imagine the range. Look, look, look at this place. What's the name of this place? It looks so much like some landscape on Mars, you know, the planet Mars or something. You know, it's fantastic. And I was just going to say that you can tell there's so many things that you can do in Namibia. You know, I feel like you have all water sports, mountain sports, desert sport. Uh, look at this. What's this? It looks, oh my goodness. It's, um, Wow, it must be a fantastic place to be. Look, it looks like some, oh, you like as if you're on Mars or something, you know. And this is Namibia. Uh, it, I still can't. I I have to. I I must go to Namibia for a fact. You 
remember, I'm sorry I keep posing, but you remember they said um, it, it, it's the, the, Namibia is a country with the highest dunes in the world. The highest dunes in the world. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Oh, it looks like you guys had a fantastic time. No, not again. No, 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 but I believe people are ignorant. What are the tourism ministers doing? You know, what, what is the country doing to promote uh, such places in Africa and for Africans? Because people are really looking forward to traveling. You know, young people nowadays want to visit more and more places. But if nobody showcases these places and people don't know, we are ignorant, you know. So I feel the potential is tremendous. But we are ignorant, and thank you so much, Wodemeyer, for educating us on such beautiful places in Africa. I mean, leave a comment and let me know. Is it because... Oh, the that's a seal, right? Wow. The tourism board of Namibia is not marketing the country that much. Or is it because Africans don't value what they have on their own continent? But if it's the first one, then I guess the Namibian tourism board to employ us and I believe that we can do a great job. Leave a comment and let me know if you are doing You're already doing a fantastic job. I mean if, if it would be a plus if the the, the the median tourism board would employ and you know so you can show them how it's supposed to be done. Of course I mean oh my goodness it's um it's fantastic. Just go for shoot your shot with a Michael. <laughs> Paragliding. Ooh. Did I convince you to visit Namibia mm. now? Mm. No! Yes, you have. Yes, you have. 100%. I didn't wait for this one to say. I'm, the first video, I was like, I must go to Namibia. So, yeah. Oh, God! No! Come on! What else do I need to tell you to convince you that Namibia is a perfect tourist destination? Welcome to the most beautiful part of Namibia. The coast where the Ocean meets the dunes. The Sandy Jabba. Uh, right here we get the Sandy Jabba Lagoon. Uh, the water here it's a mix of uh, salt water and uh, fresh water that seeps uh, just at the base of the dunes here. Then you get the peninsula that goes into the sea, and uh, that's what. Can you imagine how special this place is? So first of all, you have where the dunes meet the Atlantic Ocean. Then you have salty water, but also, uh, you know, um, normal water. All that mix brings something that is fantastic. I can imagine uh, you have all types of... I've just seen seals. I didn't know you could find seals in Namibia. I can think of immigration of birds. I can think of the whale, no, what do you call it, the dolphins that we've seen and other species that are found in this part of, the, of, of Africa. It's fantastic. Ah, the diversity is just fantastic create the, the harbor it used to be an active harbor in the in the 1700s okay. uh, discovered by the, the the sailors back then so they would use it to to actually anchor their 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 ships in this area then they also do some trades so it was i'm just wondering if you can uh because i can you can see um that uh the the, the dune part the sand 
goes all the way and can people walk on the dune can or are you going to sink if you i don't know let me know in the comment section below if you can go all the way by foot to the end of the dune ships in this area then they also do some trades so it was active until the early 19 1900s mm -hmm. uh then the operation basically shifted uh, to the bigger harbor of Wavis Bay. Wow. Let me tell you something. Whenever you go to Namibia, you can go for a jeep safari on the desert, just like what I did. done a jeep safari have you let me know in the comment section below but i would love to do it <laughs> look is that vegetation that we can see on the dunes what is that vegetation let me know <laughs> biking I have done. It's fantastic sensation. And you know one of the things that I know that I will definitely try in my next life is skydiving because for now I'm not ready. You're not ready to die, right? Yeah, I would love to do it. I believe I have to do it before I hit 40. I have to do it. It's one of the things that is in my bucket list. I don't like, I, it's not like I, I know, I don't like that kind of sensation. I, I value my life, but I feel that it's something I have to do once. <laughs> Classified as a Ramsa site. By Ramsa site, uh, it's an international convention that was signed by over 170 countries mm -hmm. that uh, agreed to protect their wetlands. Mm -hmm. and these wetlands are protected because of the, the biodiversity that they support. In this case, uh, the Wavis Bay Lagoon is mostly uh, critical, a critical uh, biodiversity site because of the, the beds different uh, birds that uh, come to feed here. Okay. We get birds from all over the world that fly in and make a stop over here. Oh, yeah. So the whole idea with the Ramsar side... I'm just it, wondering, do you have... Um, because, of, yeah, there are so many bird species and I know there could be, um, what do you call them, flamingos because they like this kind of environment. I don't know. Different nations agree because they want if a bird is flying from South America and make a stop over in Namibia, it should be safe. And it can stop in another African country because wow. it's all Ramsar sites all over the world. Yeah. So this one, uh, the most famous bird that we get here at the, at the Wavis Bay Lagoon is mostly the flamingo. Ah, you see. We get two types of flamingos. We get the greater, what you call the greater flamingo, and the other one is the lesser flamingo. Yeah. The greater flamingo is more of a carnivore. My goodness, you know, my mom is a wildlife professional, so I know so much about, you know, the the animals, the biodiversity and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's um, it's so nice. And, you know, when you're from Nakuru, you know, we have the Nakuru National Park and then you have the Lake Nakuru. As a kid, it was, it was like a pink carpet full of flamingos that they would go... Uh, there were seasons, and so it was really nice to see. It eats uh, the crustaceans. Okay, yeah. And to differentiate the two, between the two types, the greater flamingo is slightly mm -hmm. bigger. Yeah. And it's big, it's light pink with a black tip on the on, at the end. While the lesser flamingo is smaller, more pink, more pink on the, on its feathers, and uh, it's big, it's dark, uh, dark pink. Right. So right now what you see here is the lesser flamingos, and uh, I'm hoping on the other side you're gonna you're gonna see the, the lesser flamingos. These are the greater flamingos. Right? Uh, Let me know if you watch 
watching me from the media. Comment. Comment below. Would you ever believe if I tell you that this is my favorite place in the entire Namibia? I have been showing you guys the Africa that you don't see on TV, but after coming to Swakop and Wabis Bay, I believe that this really represents the Africa that you don't see on TV, to the extent that it shocked even me. I never believed that a place like this really exists on the continent mm. Africa. I would say kudos to all Namibians because this place is super clean, super organized. I mean, walking along the coastline, seeing the ocean and also an estate made me feel like damn this is indeed heaven on earth right and personally i'm like if what am i is that shot and his travel to so many places around africa um then this must be a big deal and so yes namibia is underrated 100 percent. and also for me it feels like oh you would like to invest in such a place you can imagine if you have like an airbnb in such a place and um and or even a secondary house just for the family to go and you relax sometimes it's crazy so good job namibia very good job My name is Maya, I'm from Ghana, and uh, we are in the coast of Namibia for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the most beautiful place I've ever been in my entire journey visiting across Africa. But since we're here, we definitely want to know how this place was formed. I don't know, even sometimes I was telling people, is it a city or a town? Because when I went to Wabi's Bay, they said it's a town. I went to Swakop, you check online, they said it's a city. So literally, I'm so confused. But if you can educate us, say a city well for me a city has like a connotation of like the capital city you know it's like the main uh, town in the country but then the other places are towns that's how i would differentiate the two i'll be so excited about that yeah uh, in brief possibly what i can tell is that wolf is by in soccer mode. when it comes to to the wedding of city uh, both can only be classified as uh, as, as towns. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only window can be said as a city yeah. because of being a capital city. Exactly. I was very fortunate to to work on those documents, and I was very fortunate to to be a chairperson of the of the reform in terms of local government in Namibia. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look back at uh, Sokob Moon and Wolfis Bay. Both been uh, happened to be colonized by okay. by South Africa and also in by extension by German. Okay. Uh, because you must remember that uh, uh, mm. would possibly at that time South Africans wanted to make it as a port okay. because of the area of Sokobu. And you know, you just said something very interesting that it was uh, this part of Namibia was colonized by South Africa and by extension by the Germans, you know. I think you remember the German genocide of the Namibian people, which was a horrible um, act, um, you know, and and yeah, so that's very interesting, not forgetting how South Africa struggled for so many years to gain independence and then Mandela came in and he was imprisoned and that. So the history is very long and very difficult, but it's very nice to know how this part of Namibia came to be. And then looking at the area, Sokopmund could not be the port. Mm -hmm. Then they decided to to extend Wolfis Bay or to make Wolfis Bay as a port. The name Wolfis Bay was, uh, it, it came from the whales. Mm -hmm. uh, the, because Wolfis Bay was inhibited quite a number by the whales. Mm -hmm. uh, then we, if you look into the history... Does it mean the Wafis means whales? Is it like whales in the Namibian dialect? Let me know in the comment section below. What is based where you came to know, to see that the people from, no, from Norway in Europe, they have uh, the whaling station in the port. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whales were killed here. Uh, it was harvested in Wafis Bay. Mm -hmm. 
and then it was later exported to the European countries. If you look, if you look quickly in the history of office pay, you will find that we have uh, uh, surnames like the Taylor, uh, people that came from Liberia, in terms, uh, especially from Monrovia in Liberia. Uh, we have uh, we have what we call when we talk about quizzed uh, mood, uh, especially those people having those surnames, are uh, being called the Monrovians, especially referring to the capital of Liberia. We've got a number of those people. In the later 1980s, uh, was there. And then we have people that were uh, stranded in Wolfis Bay uh, from uh, uh, Cape Verde. Mm -hmm. Cape Verde, they, were, uh, they came as stowaways. And they were also kept captive in uh, South Africa at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolfis Bay was basically annexed through the annexation of, uh, of England. As we part of England, later on be transferred to South Africa as, uh, to administer as a, as, a, as a town because of the strategic location in terms of the port. Mm. Uh, in 1978, there was a UN resolution uh, uh, to, to, for the free to as part of office by becoming a part of Namibia. Mm -hmm. It did not later on succeed. With well, the independence of, uh, of Namibia to of Namibia, office Bay was not transferred to Namibia at that time. Okay, so if I get office Bay was independent from Namibia, it was not part of Namibia. And so there was a conflict because it was a strategic place. Um, as to is it South Africa who wanted the place? Oh wow! Okay, um, that's an interesting history. I had no idea. Let me know if you knew. It remained as one of the uh, the towns that were not transferred, with independence from Namibia. Mm -hmm. Bay was later on as transferred on the night on the night of the twenty eighth March, uh, twenty twenty eighth February, okay. to be officially been part of Namibia on the first of March. 1994. It means that the, the reintegration of office pay took place on the 1st of March 1994. <laughs> is when we officially were reintegrated as a part of Namibia. So which means that you guys became independent in 1994, not yeah. even part of the uh, independence of the entire country? No. We, we, oh yeah, we, we only became part of Namibia in 1994. So does it mean that moving from... Um, Office Bay to Swap Moon, that time you need a pass, you need a visa or something like that for you to get there. Yeah, because uh, if you enter the, the bridge from Swap Moon, there was a South African area where you have to get permission to enter Office Bay. It was very strict because uh, uh, Office Bay had a hand on Office Bay. South Africa had a hand on Office Bay. It was very difficult for you to enter Office Bay at that time. And, uh, because so for so many years until 1994, which is not so long ago, that's like 27 years now, um, Wafis Bay was independent, had no state, it was under colonization by the South Africans. Oh, did you know? I didn't know when you needed a visa to go to Namibia and now they're part of Namibia. Wow. So does it mean they have like a different... Is it like a different state altogether, which is governed by um, one person, but it's still part of Namibia politically? How does it work? Let me know in the comment section below if you know. Because Wolfis Bay was administered from Cape Town. Just be part of South Africa at that time. Because I remember that uh, for you to be in Wolfis Bay at that time, uh, uh, in my case, I had an, uh, a South African ID. Uh, my my documentations was from South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, for somebody coming from Soko Moon to Warfis Bay, we're not regarded as South African because you have to have a pass. It's what we call you. Have, you need to have a pass. You must be registered. Mm -hmm. uh, for for your for your stay in Warfis Bay was only very limited. Yeah, it's why you will find that to put in a few people in Warfis Bay, their settings will change mm -hmm. for you to stay here. And, uh, and the number of people who used to come and work here. Guys, let's just recognize how the urban development is on point. It's crazy how well organized this place is. Wow. Especially they used to stay what you call a compound. 
working for the fishing industry, and then you have to, to go back after your time is, uh, is gone. You have to go back into the inlet. Let me understand. So right now, are you Namibian or South African? At this time, we are now Namibians. Yeah, but you were born in South Africa. We were, born, we were classified as being born in South Africa. <laughs> you must remember it was very difficult. It was very classified because at, uh, when South Africa had their uh, elections in 1994, yeah. some of us participated in, the, in their elections. Mm. We voted for the, the, the yeah. ANC as a government in South Africa, mm. and we voted for the Western Cape oh. in South Africa. That's crazy. That when you think about it, you're born in South Africa, but now once uh, Namibia, so Windhoek is given, no, no, um, what do you call it? Uh, I forgot the name. The, this part of Namibia came back to Namibia, then you were also Namibian. So I think, I don't think there's a conflict really, but when, because when you understand the history, you're more of an Namibian than South Africa. But I would like to know how the political uh, situation is right now in this part. Oh, this is like a salt. Looks like the pink sea in Senegal. In a part of Kenya, there's like a pink lake, I would say. So look, this looks like the sea farming or something. Salt, sorry, salt farming. It's a comprising of two companies, uh, one is the salt holdings and the one is the salt refinery. Okay, yeah. Uh, they make uh, solar, sea, solar sea salt, they pump the water from the sea and they put it in the evaporation ponds or the production ponds. Wow. Uh, they are currently operating on a 6,500 hectares uh, piece of land and they are producing about a million tons of uh, salt per annum. Uh, most majority part of, of, their, pro of their output is a uh, coarse salt, the one with uh, big grains. Do you see the mountain uh, of salt? I, we don't really hear the audio is not so good, but look at that, it's so beautiful. A smaller, smaller uh, section where they make a table salt. That is table for consumption. So the salt they produce is used for most it's industrial salt. Um, some like in South Africa they extract the chlorine. Wow. Uh, some they use it in the, in the food industry. Uh, uh, some is also used for de-icing the road, you know, in okay, snowy country. But, uh, oh, that's a good question. So is there, do you have snow in Namibia? Do you have, because why de-icing? I know when it's probably this part is very cold uh, during the cold season, but do you mean you have snow? Because I know in France, for example, well, in Europe and other places where you have the snow, then uh, we de-ice the roads because uh, it's very slippery. Let me know. More than 80% of what comes out here uh, is exported. Okay. That's why they get these trucks that are always driving up to the port where they have uh, storage and uh, the, there comes then uh, the, 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 the ships that uh, help uh, ship it out of the country. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being part of this family, but liking this video will mean a lot to me. And if you are new to the channel, do me a favor, be part of this channel by subscribing to the YouTube channel and help us reach 900,000 subscribers by the end of August. I love you all and I'm going to see you in the next one. I am Maya. Peace out. Yes, guys, please make sure you do the same for me. I need to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of August. It's my birthday month. So please make sure you share. I loved, 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 loved Namibian videos. They're just fantastic. And it's a beautiful uh, country with an interesting history, a painful one. But by the end of the day, they've come up, they've arisen from the dust. And so it's fantastic to see Namibia. Uh, it's on my bucket list. It's official. I'm coming to Namibia. So if you're from Namibia, let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know where you're from if you're not from Namibia. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. And bye.